It is time for another design battle and this is the showdown of the unibody truck. So in the red corner we have the 2022 Hyundai Santa Cruz. It's powered by a 2.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine cranking out 277 horsepower and an impressive 311 pound feet of torque. This gives the Hyundai Santa Cruz a 0 to 60 time in 6 seconds flat. It's got all wheel drive as standard and power to the four wheels comes through an 8 speed dual clutch automatic with a lockable center differential. Fuel economy shows around 24 miles per gallon in mixed driving and the starting price for the Hyundai Santa Cruz is $25,215, which is not bad for what you get. And in the blue corner, we have the largest unibody of them all, and that is, of course, the 2022 Honda Ridgeline. And this is powered by a 3.5 liter naturally aspirated V6 engine, putting out 280 horsepower and 262 pound feet of torque. Bigger engine, less torque than in the Hyundai. It's a little slower to 60 miles per hour, which is completes in 6.2 seconds. So it's not too slow. Power is also transferred here to the wheels via a ZF 9-speed automatic transmission and is equipped with Honda's torque vectoring all-wheel drive system. In addition, it also has something really important. It also has a proper limited slip differential on the rear axle. It's thirstier than the Santa Cruz for sure with a combined rating of 21 miles per gallon and it's also a lot pricier. The basic sport trim for the Honda Ridgeline starts at $38,115 and that's quite a gap from the Hyundai uh, Santa Cruz that starts at $25,000. So now let's jump into Photoshop and let's compare these designs and I'm gonna let you know what I think of them, which one I would buy based on the design. And it's gonna be really interesting when we jump into the side view because that's where you can really see the differences here. I'm gonna do a little design redesign experiment to show you just how different these two are with a couple of changes to the designs. So first of all, we have the Hyundai Santa Cruz up here and just have a look at this design. I think it's such a cool design and a, a, a innovative approach to truck design. And I think this is actually going to appeal to a younger audience, maybe not to the proper truck people uh, that needs the uh, full functionality of what a truck has to offer. This is more in between an SUV and a truck, leaning, I would say, I mean a crossover, leaning more towards a crossover than an actual uh, truck in my opinion. But the styling here, fantastic. I mean Hyundai having a lot of fun with this uh, graphic design in the front end. You can see that these are the daytime running lights part of the grill here, just like we have in the new Tucson on as well. Then you have the headlights sitting very, very low. These are definitely inside of the bumper right here. Not sure how low you can go in regulations to make this work, but I think this is probably on the limit because this sits almost low as a hypercar in, in relation to the height from the ground here. But it looks pretty cool. It gives it definitely a unique front fascia. This is not something that you're going to mis mistake for anything else than a Hyundai Santa Cruz when you look at it specifically at night. I also like the approach to angles here. You have some really interesting design. You have this line up here, of course, framing the top part, which is pretty horizontal. Then you have a line going down here in an angle, but then you have this super sharp corner right here. I Normally, I wouldn't feel like these work well together, but when you look at the design overall, this happens all over the body. So it has a continuity to it. So that means that in my opinion, this actually works for the Hyundai here. You also have very angular lower part right here, as you can see. And of course, the very low part, the lip down there at the bottom also creates a nice foundation to build up the front end on. Looking at the Honda here, this is completely a different approach to what we have in the Hyundai. I mean, it's like uh, going back almost 10 15 years in how you design a truck looking at the Honda Ridgeline this is also a pretty old design they're in um, they're, they're they're about to release a new Ridgeline soon I, I hope but at the same time I mean I like this traditional approach to a front end as well it looks more more of a crossover front face than a proper truck face because we still have more styling here leaning towards the crossover type of style or small SUV type of style than you have in a truck which is more 
geometrical and horizontal here, but it still works and it gives the Honda maybe not as strong of an identity as you have in the Santa Cruz with these lights right here. This could be mistaken for a Subaru daytime running lights if you just look at this piece right here. And this, that is the piece that is lit up during daytime. It kind of reminds me a little bit of the, of the Subaru uh, daytime running lights, but it still sets it apart with the grill here. But that requires it to be daytime to see what it actually is coming towards you. If you see this at night, you, it could be mistaken for a bunch of different cars. So not the same super strong identity like we have in the Santa Cruz, but I still think it looks pretty good in the front end. So now looking at the rear, it's the same story here. I mean, here they are just going crazy with their styling. What I really like about the Santa Cruz is this chamfer framing that we have off the rear graphics. I think this looks really, really good. You kind of have a, a inset in, in the rear end that continues not just in the corner parts right here, which we normally have the lights positioning in, in any truck. Normally, the lights don't stretch into the actual tailgate, I mean, like you have right here with these LEDs. So this is both cool looking design wise, but what this creates now for Hyundai is it creates a less practical bed. We're gonna talk more about that when we look at the side view because this detail, this uh, light here, it requires the tailgate to be thicker because you need more things inside of the tailgate itself to make this work. You need the electronics behind it and everything needs to fit within the tailgate itself. That makes it thicker and on top of that, this is more in, in uh, when we talk about the side view, but you have this angle here as well, intruding on the bed size. So that's why I think this is more of a lifestyle vehicle than a, a truck for people who really need the functionality, 100% functionality of the bed specifically when it comes to a truck design. But at the same time, I think it's a really cool and fun, unique approach to designing a truck from Hyundai. I think they did a really cool job and they were, it's not easy making something like this and putting it out on the market. It's a huge risk by Hyundai by, by, by designing this and stylizing this to this point, specifically when it comes to the truck segment. You can see that we have this identifier in the shoulder line right here, which is in a lot of Hyundai models. You have it go a little bit forward and then it just inter intersects here, crashes into some particle there, and then the particles go in two different right directions like that. Looks a lot better, it's a lot easier to show you when we talk about the side view, when we're also gonna make the little experiment that I was talking about. Now looking at the ridge line, look at this, the difference between the approach to functionality versus styling. Hyundai, 110% into styling while the ridge line is about I would say 25 30 35 percent into styling you can see that they decided to not stretch the taillight into the bed which creates a very functional simplistic approach to the tail uh, to the tailgate I keep saying bad I mean the tailgate when you open this you're gonna have a lot thinner tailgate which also in in itself is gonna give you more bed space it's very simple and it's very logical to have the taillight thicken up far to the end point or the to the corner point of the tailgate right here not intruding into this piece because then you're gonna have to have as I said a thicker tailgate intruding in the bed space. But one detail that I've always loved about the ridge line is it's one of these details that probably no one will think about but every time I see the ridge line I think about it and that is this how this tail light fits in the body it sits so flush and I feel like the tolerances between the tail light and the body is one of the smallest tolerances I've ever seen and it really looks like the body sheet of metal continues into the taillight itself it's like you can't you can barely see a cut line there I want you to to look at the ridge line next time you see it and just look at that detail and appreciate the uh, the engineering that went into having it be so tight to the sheet metal and then the plastic and this line here barely visible in the ridge line a detail that I really appreciate that probably not a lot of people would think about but it's something that every time I see the ridge line, I'm always amazed by the design of the tail light. And then of course we have the dual tailpipes down here, which I really like. I've told you about that before. Looks like two bazookas shooting the ridge line forward. It just creates a very nice symmetrical line and design looking at it from a straight rear view. Now we're gonna jump in to the side view and then I'm gonna add another segment to these videos. And that's where I'm gonna have a look at the interior as well, because I think that's important specifically in this case. So it might be something that I'm adding to the these design battles moving forward. So now let's have a look at the side view. And this is where you can really see the differences in approach 
to their styling here. The Ridgeline, typical truck design right here. The Hyundai, going nuts with the styling and lines. You have this shoulder line like we talked about, splitting right here, boom, going in two different directions, creating a unique shoulder line for the brand Hyundai. You're gonna recognize this when you see it, just uh, by looking at the shoulder line, which I think it's a really cool idea to have the key, one, of the, one of the key lines of the car being an identifier for the entire brand. I think that's a cool idea. You can look at the line here. So we have the problem this creates. It looks very, very futuristic. It looks very cool, innovative, but as a truck, what this creates, they say that this has a 51 bed, and that is when you count it all the way to the this point right here. But then you have this pillar intruding here. So the real measurement of the bed of the Santa Cruz is actually 10 inches less, it's 41 inches. And that is a tiny bed space if you count, if you measure the rail lengths moving forward, moving back from this point to this point right here. That's only 41 inches. And that is not ideal if you wanna do a lot of truck things, you wanna load a lot of big things that stick kind of above the, uh, the, the, the bed height. But that's a compromise that Hyundai decided to do. They wanted to go harder on the styling, probably, you know, attract a totally different market than the Ridgeline is going to attract. And I totally understand it. I really respect it. And I think it's a really cool idea. I want to see more vehicles like this. That is a mix between a lot of different uh, categories of cars. It's kind of cool to do that. This is, to me, as I said, a mix between a truck and a crossover, the ideal mix. We're going to do the experience pretty soon. But first, let's talk about the Ridgeline right here. Traditional bed uh, space right here. The bed is almost looks like a body on frame package here, but it's not. It's of course a unibody. But when you have this vertical line right there, what that creates in bed space is here, we have 64 inches of bed space. And that is because this is not stylized at all. We just have that being straight function. And I think that would appeal to more traditional truck buyers that kind of want something maybe a little bit more a smaller and a little more comfortable than a body on frame package. And I really like these wheels as well. I like the bronze wheels. I think it sets it off nicely to the white. I would want to have a little thicker tires on this. The tires look a little skinny. Here we have 20 inch and I think they fill up the wheelhouses better than they do down here on the Ridgeline. Now let's do this little experiment just to show you how close a crossover this Hyundai Santa Cruz really is. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this part and then copy it and move it back and just show you how easily we can create a uh, crossover from from this design. So let's just move this back like this, stretch it out a little bit, maybe something like that. And boom, look at that. We have ourselves pretty much a nice looking crossover that could be in production today from Hyundai. So that's how close this uh, Santa Cruz is when it comes to design and how close it is to being almost a legit crossover. All we gotta do is just cover up the bed and then we essentially have a nice looking crossover. Of course, we need to work on some details here, but this is not a proper redesign, obviously. I'm just showing you the uh, the idea of having a cover over the bed and how that drastically transforms the entire proportions and the vibe of the Hyundai Santa Cruz. Now it almost looks like an off-road wagon. I think it looks pretty cool like this, actually. Now, if we do the same thing on the Ridgeline down here, you're going to see that it, we can still see that it is based on a pickup truck. And I think that's the big difference here between these two. If we just stretch it out like this, work a little bit on the perspective, maybe you can still see that this looks like a truck that has a cover over the bed while the Hyundai Santa Cruz up here it looks now like a wagon or a crossover and that's just goes to show how focused Hyundai is to making this appeal to I think crossover buyers and have some of that market come come over to feel out how it is what, what it's like to own a pickup truck of this size so now quickly now let's not make this video too long but I want to show you the interiors here and we have a very up-to-date interior in the Hyundai right here when we have a really traditional in the Ridgeline. This is all a matter of taste, obviously. You have a digital display right here, a digital display in the center. You have a smaller digital di display here with an analog gauge cluster in the Ridgeline. So the Ridgeline is obviously a lot more dated than the Hyundai. The Hyundai looks like it could be from 10 years from now. But personally, if I were to buy a truck and use it for truck purposes, I don't want to have touch screen things, uh, dials, for the basic stuff. If we zoom in here, you can see that the climate control here is actually a, a, a not a knob, but a toggle. You can toggle up and down. And I prefer that because you need 
need to think about the user market here or, or the target audience for this. Maybe they're working outside, they have gloves on, and you want to think about stuff like that. How easy is it to con con control stuff? In the Hyundai, it looks a little less user-friendly for people, for example, working outside with gloves. That's just what I'm thinking about. As an example, it's a very beautifully sculpted interior with these lines and vents up here. I like how it's integrated in the line flow of the interior, but when it comes to usability, I think I would prefer the Honda Ridge line in this case. So to sum it up, I think these are two very, very different philosophies on how to build a truck and how they appeal to, I think, two completely different audiences. I think the Hyundai uh, Santa Cruz, as I said, is appealing to crossover buyers who want to have something a little more exciting, a little more special, but not fully committed to buying a, uh, a truck. While the Ridgeline is appealing to, I think, buyers who want to have a proper work truck, but they don't necessarily want the size or the full off-road four-wheel drive functionality of a body-on-frame truck. And I think that's reflected in the price as well. The pricing is a lot higher for the Honda Ridgeline, but in this case, if I were to buy one of these, I would probably go for the Hyundai Santa Cruz. If I were to buy a truck, I did buy a truck, a Ram Rebel. I needed the Rebel to be a proper body-on-frame truck for what I'm planning to do with it, but I don't think the Ridgeline can reach that level. It's right below it. So in this case, I would choose the more uniquely designed Santa Cruz for just cruising around and just throwing some beach stuff on the bed and not doing some serious truck-related work.